Earthquakes are normally associated with two tectonic plates moving past each other. However, it's possible that earthquakes are created far away from the boundaries between two plates. And the cause of this is in the form of ice, or rather in the change in ice levels, resulting in what's known as post-glacial rebound. We tend to think the rocks underneath the soil are solid and very difficult to move. However, rocks can be subjected to enormous forces over time. When those forces overcome the resistance of the rocks, they move, creating the earthquakes. Most of the time, the movement is caused by heat deep within the earth. Sometimes it's caused by something cold above the earth. Now, during the last ice age, many of the parts of the earth's surface were covered in ice more than a kilometre thick. In some parts, they were three kilometres thick, or about eight times the height of the Empire State Building. That mass of ice would result around 3,000 tonnes of pressure for every square metre of the Earth's surface covered by the thickest ice sheet. That force pressing down on the surface for thousands of years resulted in the underlying rock structure being pushed down and deformed. However, as the Earth has warmed up, much of the ice has melted, the pressure on the rocks has reduced, and the crust that was covered in the ice has rebounded. That rebound, however, doesn't happen the instant the pressure of the ice is removed. Instead, it occurs gradually over time, occasionally in sudden little jumps, resulting in the earthquakes. Rebound means that many areas like Norway and the northern parts of Canada are actually rising steadily out of the sea. Alternatively, in the United Kingdom, where the thickest ice sheet covers Scotland, the is acting like a giant seesaw, with Scotland rising out of the water and the southern parts of England sinking into the sea. The same seesaw effect is happening to a lesser extent with Canada and the USA. Additionally, without this rebound effect occurring at all, about half of Finland would still actually be underwater. The speed of rebound depends on how much ice was originally pushing down and the type of underlying rock strata that the ice was actually pushing upon. And despite the majority of the ice having melted a long time ago, many parts of the Earth's surface are still moving around about one centimetre per year. Normally this motion is difficult to see, over time it leaves noticeable signs on the land around us, as well as inducing the occasional earthquake. Now, since the majority of the melting occurred thousands of years ago, the rate of the rebound should now be slowing significantly. It's only got a relatively small distance to go to restore the pre-ice sheet levels. However, glaciers and ice sheets are still melting at this current moment in time. Indeed, they may actually now be melting faster than any time in the Earth's history. As the ice melts, it's possible that the rate of rebound might actually increase. This in turn could affect earthquakes and even volcanic activity. And the effects of the melting ice water flowing into the oceans, combined with warmer ocean water expanding to take up more room, and a post-glacial rebound, all of the coastlines around the world are likely to change radically during this century.